One of the key benefits of our PLC trainers is we've really thought about our past users as we have made upgrades to them. So you can take our original PLC trainer and you can upgrade it to our modern PLC trainer. In fact, here is our original prototype trainer. This we called an ICP. That stood for Industrial Control Panel Trainer. Notice it didn't even have a PLC back then. It was more about learning about electricity and everything. And we can still learn electricity with our modern trainer. But over time, we've kind of done some tilting on it to make it a little easier for you to access items. We've added some IO link options. We have the free face fan with the encoder for PID control. And we have a variety of PLC options and some networking options. So today we're going to talk through how do you take your basic trainer that you've purchased sometime in over the last 10 years and turn it into one of our modern trainers. Now, if you have one and you would like to update it, then reach out to us because each application is going to be a little bit different. But when I was going through this this morning, there's only been four real modifications done to this basic plate since the first trainer. These two holes over here were added when we added the linear actuator for motion control. Our meter has been modified, this hole right here, as we've changed our meter. And we've actually made some 3D printed adapters to get that fixed. And we have the two holes down here that now we pass some wires through over here. So on the front of it, the big thing is we've turned this DIN rail up about 45 degrees just to make it easier to wire to some of the bottom terminals. So let's go ahead and just take all of the DIN rail off of your trainer. And then you're going to have four of these angled brackets. Let me spin this around so you can kind of compare what we're doing to what we'll end up with. So on this far side, you'll actually have two of the brackets sandwiched together. So we're going to put the screw through the angled bracket and then it goes through the bottom hole over here. And you'll get another bracket. Then you'll put your flat washer on it. And then you can put your strip. And then you can put your nut back on it. And then on the middle one here, you just put the screw in from the back side. Then it's going to get an angled bracket. And then we'll put our flat washer on. And then we'll put our nut on. And then on the right hand one, we'll take our screw and flat washer. And we'll put it through the bracket. And it goes through all over here. Then it'll get a flat washer. And it'll get a nut. Then you can put your DIN rail back on, and we'll spin our trainer around. Now, depending on which version of the trainer you have, you may only have a piece of DIN rail that went here. But over time, we extended that DIN rail all the way across. So yours may come with a new piece of DIN rail, and we'll bolt that all the way across the back. That'll give you a nice amount of room to add components over time. In fact, I'm sure somebody can say they have the exception, but no one has ever asked for a design on this that between these two pieces of the DIN rail, we haven't managed to squeeze into this frame. And really, the frame works out well being this size. We spent a lot of time really designing this at first, saying, okay, we could have this much room on a desk for this trainer. They'll probably need some a notebook or something to take notes. And then they're going to need a laptop and really figured out exactly what size they would need. Then we're going to grab four terminal blocks. And on one of those terminal blocks, we're going to put an end anchor on. It just snaps on like that. Then we'll line them all up and the exposed side goes towards the right. We're going to pop those on. Pop the one with the end anchor on. And then you're going to have a jumper. And we'll press the jumper in. And then we'll repeat the press uh, then we'll grab four more terminals. This time we won't put an end cap on it. We snap them down. And then we'll put our jumper in those. Then we'll take a ground block and it does get the end cap on it. You can just line it up, snap it down, snap it on. Next we're going to put on our Ethernet switch. There's a screw down here. We'll loosen up a little bit. And that lets the DIN rail clip make it work and move. We'll snap it on. And our ground wire is going to go right here. Just plug it into that green block. And after that, depending on which option of PLC you have, you would snap your PLC option on. And then you would put your end anchor back on. And really, that gets our back of our trainer about like our modern ones once you get your Ethernet cables plugged in. All right, now, depending on the version of it you have up here, 
you may only have buttons one, two, three, and four. Let's lean that around. So yours may look like this. And our modern ones have all these options here. So we're going to add those to it. And we have two position switches and three position switches. Or two positions. Oh, we have two positions. The three positions. Three. And yeah, the two positions have one contact lock. The three positions have two. So if you're following our videos, switch one and switch two, they're two position switches. So, so you have two screws on the back side that you're going to loosen up, and then you twist it, and it comes apart. Now if we turn in, you can stick the head through switch one, and the back just twists back on. And now you can take your screwdriver and tighten that up. What I say is just snug them down a little bit. They don't need to be ridiculously torqued down and make them nice and even across there. Now we're going to repeat the same thing on switch two. Switch three is exactly the same. And we'll put switch four in. Whoops. We'll put it in the correct direction and then go ahead and tighten all of them up. All right. Next we have the potentiometer. And while it is exactly the same, it can be more difficult because you got to loosen it up. And then you got to make sure you line up the two locators when you're putting it back together. So this is one that's easiest to have it in the right orientation, which is the terminal blocks down. And then get it right where you want it, loosen it up, run it over to where you want to put it, and then line it back up. And then you can tighten your screws exactly the same way. Now the meter is the one that you are going to have some variations. If we look over here on the original meter, this original meter was much larger. And then we had a version that was a square. But as they've gone obsolete mostly, we've had to adjust this one. And finally, we got it down to it's a 22 millimeter hole, the same as all the rest of them, which was, was really exciting when we made is that. Just take the nut off of it, slide it through, and put the nut back on. And then we have a red mushroom button. We'll slide it in, put it on, and tighten. Next, you're ready to mount our motor. So your motor will come with fan, one fan guard already installed in the motor lead. That's going to go on the front side of the trainer. And then you'll have a guard, and the guard goes on the back side of the trainer. So the easiest way to do this is just install the top two screws so it gets a flat washer and a screw. The motor cover goes to the bottom. This object. Stick one screw in, stick your second screw in, and that'll hold it in there good enough to spin it around. And we'll put our guard on, and we'll put a flat washer on, and put our nut on. Now you can repeat it on the bottom fan mounts. Stick your bottom screws in, that'll hold them in place, and put your flat washer on. Couldn't quite see it, but y'all can figure out where those are at. That completes the backside of our trainer with the exception of our power wiring, so... If your PLC there is there, you'd hook up your power. You'd have your left set of terminal blocks. That's going to be your plus 24. Your right set's going to be your minus. In this case, we'll take the blue wire to the L1. We take the light wire to the M1. And yeah, they just pop into those blocks like that. And now we'll spin our trainer back around. Next, you're going to mount our power supply. Now, depending on what upgrade you're doing, you may not need to do this step. You may already have a power supply mounted right here, and that's perfectly fine. You just leave it. Your wire's already going through, connected exactly the same. But some of the power supplies on the basic trainers were just loose power plugs. And so if you did have the loose power plug, you'll get a new power supply. And we'll remove the sticky backs on it. And it goes centered here at the bottom. And just leave it up a little bit so it's not dragging on your table, like so. And then this wire will tuck through the hole over here. And then your white wire goes to your plus 24 volt. And your bare wire goes to your minus 24 volt. And it's a little hard to push the bare wire in, so I usually just take a screwdriver right there. And now we're ready to mount our PowerFlex 525. So before we do, we're going to press down right here on this arrow. That's going to let the cover pop off. And very important, notice you have two ports that look almost identical here. One's labeled Ethernet, one's labeled DSI. You want to plug your Ethernet cable into the Ethernet port. And then we're going to pop it on the DIN rail. And there's a release down here. You just pull down and it, and it snaps right on. 
And now the Ethernet cable actually runs in between the motor and the drive, and you can slide the drive over after that. That holds it in place. It's going to tuck through this hole right here, and we'll plug it in. On most of our trainers, it is plugged into port 2. Now, on our PowerFlex 525, there's an additional cover because the air is hazardous voltage underneath it. We're going to pop that cover off, and we have our motor leads here. So first you have one green screw on the right side, you have one green screw on the left side. On our motor lead, we're going to take our green wire and connect it to our green screw. And then your labels here say T1, T2, and T3. Your black wire is going to go to T1, your white wire is going to go to T2, and your red wire goes to T3. And then you're ready to connect your power cables. Now there's two power cables. We have one power cable that will plug into the wall. And then we have the other one that plugs into the power supply. And you will see that there is a ring terminal down here for us to secure it with. So same thing. We have two green wires and we have a green screw on the left side. So first we're going to take our two green wires and connect them underneath the green screw one on the left side of the green screw one on the right side of the green screw and then we have an l1 terminal we have an l2 terminal and then where l3 is there's not a screw because this is 120 volt powered single phase drive so we're going to take our two black wires and we're going to put them under l1 and then we are going to take our two white wires and put them under l2 then we'll take a power supply cord. We're kind of going to loop it around here because we're going to add a tie wrap in a little bit. And it's going to plug into our power supply. And then we're going to take the power cord and we're going to bring it up this way. And it goes over this stud here. And then it's going to get a second washer. In other words, do not remove what we've already done here. It's going to get a second flat washer and a second nut and that's what will secure it in place then very important this cover here i see so many systems out in the field that these covers are removed for trust me rockwell's not producing this cover if it's not necessary this is going to keep our hazardous voltage from being easily accessed when we're working with our control terminals which should be a safer voltage so snap that cover back on and then we're ready to put the cover back on the power plug. And that gets us to our main industrial control panel trainer that we have today. Now let's talk about a few more options. The most popular option I see you add is the IO link option because one, we can learn about different types of sensors with it. We have a laser distance sensor here that we can pull in. We have an inductive proximity switch and we have capacitive proximity switch it's really that covers the three major sensor applications. And those can either wire to your PLC or they can wire to this IO link module, which then collects that data over Ethernet and we can pull it into any PLC that supports Ethernet IP, Profinet, or Modbus TCP. And it gets this encoder that's coupled to your fan and we connect over it. And then you can learn about PIDs and process control. And then on this one, this is actually our video trainer. That's the only reason it's pre-wired. That way I can quickly go through lessons with you. A little bit different mounting option on this one because this one also has the motion control linear actuator on it. So we can learn a little about motion control. And there are many other additional accessories that you may add to yours. On mine, I do have this Cognitive Vision system so we can learn a little bit about vision. Now, if you're interested in upgrading your PLC trainer, then click here. This is a link that will take you to where you can send an inquiry in and we can figure out what trainer you have and what we would need to do to upgrade it. And if you're looking at this trainer thinking, hey, these are really cool. I think I want to buy one. At that link, you can find our standard PLC trainers. And here's a link right here that has some of our lesson examples, including lessons on Studio 5000, Connected Components Workbench, and General Industrial Wiring.